at the moment we're seeing uh, a lot of issues around uh, poor uh, residue management and that's relating to uh, lower levels of conserved moisture in the soil and they're certainly showing uh, signs uh, there now visually whereby the crops are a lot thinner and perhaps maturing a lot less um, earlier than we would have liked um, and that's obviously going to um, reduce our yield significantly in those areas. We're not only looking at uh, lower moisture in those areas where the, the residue isn't spread but we're also looking at uh, uh, a range of different levels of nutrients across the, uh, the width of the spreading. Um, so that's going to relate to lower levels of nitrogen um, down the track and, and possibly um, uh, decrease uh, or not increase our levels of carbon which we're ultimately trying to do. Having uh, the residue on top um, as far as uh, encouraging uh, the biology we do have in the soil and making sure that they do populate and, um, and they're they are there for the long term is, is so important. Um, we want to create a bigger bucket or, or water holding capacity of our soils. Obviously it leads to reduced evaporation, um, significantly reduces wind and water erosion and that's where I think the big one um, has really uh, come into play the last uh, 10 to 15 years in, in, in managing our, our soil a lot better. It's not, uh, not eroding and, and you know it's valuable money that we've got sitting in that top 10 centimetres that we need to keep on our farm and also improve it further. Um, obviously soil cover providing insulation over summer um, that's, a, that's a big one as far as making sure our soil temperatures don't get too hot. Um, we want to make sure that we create an environment that encourages um, microbiology and, and also retains that moisture. All these benefits equate to more profit in the long term and that's what we're all striving, striving to do. Of course, with all this there becomes uh, a few negatives and a few problems which uh, I'm sure most of you guys have endured in one way or another but um, blockages at sowing uh, leads to downtime and reduced sowing hours so we all know that um, Unfortunately, there's, there's some machines that, uh, that block more than others, but at the end of the day, if they're in the wrong conditions, a lot of them will block anyway. Um, timing of sowing is everything. Um, that's one of the things that we really can uh, improve on for uh, not a lot of um, uh, cost. Uh, increased level of pests such as slugs and slaters and mice. Uh, further south of here, obviously, slugs have been a big issue. And, and all these insects are becoming an issue because we've created a friendly environment for them but ultimately that environment is very suitable for our farming system. Uh, reduced efficacy of herbicides, um, particularly pre-emergence, so um, with a, a lot of them being tied up with any sort of organic matter, whether it's burnt or whether it's um, retained stubble, um, unfortunately we're under more pressure uh, from weeds like ryegrass and our pre-emergence that we've got. Well, some of them are uh, very um, uh, highly uh, reduced in terms of efficacy when it comes to residue. The last one is the, uh, the allopathic effect of nitrogen tie-up can lead to potential poor germination and crop establishment issues. Um, I think we've all sort of seen that. Um, obviously in the first few years there's a lot more nitrogen tie up than what there is in the long term, but um, we can sort of get around those issues. So obviously when it comes to harvest we need to be thinking about all the different uh, aspects that uh, influences our management of residue. Obviously uh, the crop type. Um, we all know that uh, every crop type uh, behaves differently when it goes through the, the machine at harvest and canola cereal and pulses there's so much difference between them. The harvest speed and material throughput so you know, trying to maximise efficiency but also thinking about well we do need to actually spread our residue correctly and um, the harvest speed and the amount of throughput really does impact on that. The harvest height and length of crop residue, this is probably the most important one, is to understand the actual height of stubble that you need to be leaving behind um, to enable you to be able to sow through it correctly the following year. And then the length of the crop residue, we want to try and concentrate on getting uh, smaller uh, lengths of residue to enable quicker breakdown 
Um, but then obviously the finer it gets, the harder it is to throw uh, to the width of your machine. So again, a compromise. Um, understanding your spreading width um, and nine metres versus 12. Uh, the moisture content of the residue, obviously starting off in the morning when you're harvesting, if the conditions are suitable, um, the, the residue at the back of the machine won't spread correctly or concentrated in certain areas compared to others. But at the same time, you're not going to stop harvesting because of that. So it really, you really do need to enable a, to have a, a machine that will handle that sort of condition. Um, chaff versus straw, obviously the chaff will, will, will spread further than the, uh, sorry, the straw will spread further than the chaff, so we need to make sure we manage both of them. Um, and the weather conditions um, at, at harvest time will impact on it too. So to get the full benefit, the crop residue must be spread evenly and consistency across the harvesting width. And I think we all understand that, we're just trying to work out the best way to achieve it. Finally, the crop residue um, favours more microbial, microbial activity resulting in quicker breakdown and um, I know there has been a comment made, I think that there is residue out there breaking down too quick that they, you know, after being in the system for so long it's hard to hold on to it. Well, I think that's a great luxury to have, I think we all want to get there. Um, so I still think that the finer that we can get it, the better. Short term costs are quite high obviously, but the long term benefits as we talked about earlier with the profit is what we're all trying to achieve. So the take home messages here is, is we want to ensure um, that you have the best residue management system on your header to suit your individual needs and everyone's got different needs, so not every system is going to suit everyone, so um, it's really important that you, we yeah, gather some really good information from the units out the back and take home for what you think might suit, suit yours. Develop some strategies for different scenarios. So we need to have a plan going into harvest whether we're going to be dealing with shorter crops this year. So I gather we, we're not going to be um, having to take as much residue off to achieve the same ideal um, harvest height for next year's sowing. Um, so that in itself may create issues because we mightn't have enough throughput through the header to achieve the full width of the machine um, spreading width. So um, that's really important, different crop types, um, things to think about. And the, the crop residue management sowing starts at harvest. I think that's the biggest one that we all um, need to understand. So I guess the whole idea of today's workshop is to really appreciate that uh, residue management does start at harvest and uh, there's uh, some small headaches around, around that but there's far greater headaches at sowing time and there's not one system that suits everyone and um, having a diverse range of clients on a range of distant, different systems they really need to understand um, what their limitations are and what their goals are in terms of uh, control traffic system, whether or not they're on a 9 metre system versus a 12 metre system, that's ultimately going to determine the challenges for, for them. But today is uh, a day we can all come together and share information um, that we've, uh, I guess, uh, accrued over a number of years um, and learn from those that have perhaps been uh, doing um, the, or managing their residues for, for a number of years and we can really withdraw upon their experiences and make sure we don't make the same mistakes um, and perhaps discuss further opportunities heading forward.